Wow, it's 2019 already. Can you believe it? Where did last year go? Couldn't believe how fast last year went. Well, anyway, in today's episode, I'm going to give you a little look around the plot. In 2018, I didn't do a plot tour at all. So none of you really got to see one whole garden tour. But in this episode, I'm going to take you for a look around. Now, bear in mind, I haven't planted anything through the winter because I have a load of plans that I want to put in place over the winter ready for next year. And we're going to talk about that right after this. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is UK UE Grow. On this channel, we deal with all things gardening, poultry keeping and beekeeping. If you want to make your garden a perfect place to relax or want to know how to grow your own food, then click the subscribe button and bell icon to be notified each time we put out new content just like this. Well, this area, guys, is the fruit area. This is the fruit plot. Now, this isn't part of my main plot. That's up there. This was the very first plot I took over on this site and it's on quite a strong sort of slope here, okay? We're probably talking maybe about 20 feet difference from top to bottom. But in this area, we put in all the trees. We've got some standard pears just down by here. And then we went into, we were gonna train some fan apples. Uh, we've got some espalier that we are starting to train here and we've got some cordons which uh, I need to tie in along here. So this is the apples. There is 18 trees here at the moment and we have a load of other trees in one of our other areas. But we are doing a video, a collaboration video with Hugh, Erica and Liz and myself and we are going to be planting a load of apple seed which are trying to produce our own apple because you all know that all apples are grafted because that's the only way that you can get yourself that variety of apple by cloning the parent. When you plant the seed, it will possibly give you apples, but it will revert to some other form. The idea behind this is that I'm going to be planting them on the main plot and they're going to use them in a spalier as hedging and we're going to see whether or not that throws some really nice apples. Now, just up here a little bit, we have the strawberry and the raspberry beds. They're in a right state at the moment, as you can imagine, guys. The strawberries, I need to rebuild this bed, get some good quality soil in it and get some strawberries. Now, a lot of them are still fine and we'll plant them on and I got a load of other strawberries that I had off Liz from by the farm as well. Um, they're up on the other plot, which I'll show you in a moment. These are autumn raspberries or fall raspberries, okay? So they all need to be cut right back to the ground and I'm gonna be getting on with this plot over the next few weeks. And there's a reason. Now, the gentleman who was next door to me didn't dig the top of his plot last year and further up the plot, which I'll show you in a moment, there was all sorts of things like bindweed and cut grass and stuff, and it got under the path and it got into my perennial beds, and it's an absolute nightmare. On this area, we have our black currant beds. Right across here is gooseberry. And as you can see, this stuff is an absolute nightmare. So I've got to get in here, I've got to pretty much get out as much of I, as I can and then keep on top of it through next year. This is our blueberry bed here and we have absolute tons of blueberry. And just for the reference guys, get yourself into the description below and I'm gonna put a link for the fruit pruning playlist there because I show how to prune all of these for really good harvests. Behind me, we've got some fantastic honey berries. They are producing loads. Next, we've got some black currant, and these are already in bud. It's just so mild, and we're only on the 1st of January. So, and then last thing that we have up here is some red currants, and again, they're doing really well. But these got choked out this year by, uh, by the bindweed. And we have loganberry right on the very back. Right, I've just walked onto the edge of my plot here. And right here, I have some compost bays that 
I'm in the middle of finishing. Now, in this compost area, I've dumped loads of resources that I've been collecting over the last couple of months. And when I finish building the compost base, I will then make up the compost um, and let that sort of brew. But we have some really good broken down wood chip here, which will be ideal as a carbon source. We have all sorts of wet straw and hay. We've got bags of grass clippings and all of the cuttings and things that we've taken off the plot over the last few months are all sort of dumped down here. Now, this area was a place that I took on last year. I took on just this little bit up into the greenhouses. After the greenhouse, well, where the sheds are there, um, it wasn't my land anymore. And we had a little bit the other side as well. Now, there is a chance of us that the gentleman who has all of those is going to be giving up this year. And if he does, we'll take all of those out and we'll put it back to soil. Um, but all along here, I had lettuce that bolted. And as you can see now, it's chucked out a load of self-seeded lettuce all along here. So we will probably lift a few of those and keep those. Our chard is still going really well and uh, this area does need to be sorted out but like I said it's all going to be based around what we do with these compost bins. Okay guys so this plot here now um, we've just come forward a little bit basically and along the edge there we've got those rhubarb crowns that we did a video on. Now, all the videos or all the things I'm talking about, they're gonna be separate videos that you can see and I'll put everything down in the description below and that way it'll be an easy way to, for you to find them. Now, I've got a space here um, just, up, just up past me that hasn't been dug yet and believe it or not, there's still potatoes in here. There was a section around where Wurzel is that um, I dug spuds out yesterday and you may have saw a photo on Facebook or Instagram about that. We have Wurzel here guys. Now he's looking worse away. Um, as you can see his hands are falling off, the uh, face is all broken. If I get a close up on it. So it's all cracking now so I need to redo his face. His clothes have all rotted. But when you consider that Wurzel has been around for six years, I think it is, um, I think he's done really, really well. Now, the soil around here, people were remarking on it. This is my soil. I work really hard on my soil, as you can see. It, it's loads of organic matter goes into this soil every single year. It don't look so good when it's like that sat on top where the rain's been bashing it, but when it's turned over it is lovely stuff and there's tons and tons of organic matter goes on and I keep telling people feed your soil not your plants guys because that if you get that web life right then you're gonna get everything right and your plants will thrive no matter what and it'll also help them fend off things like uh, pests and disease okay so those were the roof sheets that we took off the shed and as you can see the sun has ruined them now and uh, they're all going to be going to the tip. Um, the ground itself though is all ready um, and we've got a grapevine just down there that was left on our front doorstep so I planted it there in the summer. I thought it was dead but it's uh, managed to come back and start to throw out some side shoots so what we'll do now through the winter is we'll traipse some wires across there and uh, that way it will um, allow us to train that like we do the ones in the tunnel. I've pulled the scaffolding down which is for the long beans for the giant beans and that's down for the winter because we'll be removing that. All this area has been dug um, but what I plan on doing now I got some IBCs up there and I'm going to plan on digging a trench the whole length of the allotment right the way down to the bottom and what I'm going to be doing is putting in a pipe work and we're going to put stand pipes up every sort of 15 to 20 feet um, which will allow us to collect uh, connect up a hose pipe um, so that's one of the jobs we're going to be doing and 
By doing that, it means that anywhere in the garden, I can just connect a hose pipe up, and within 10 feet, I'll be able to get 10 foot length of hose and just connect it in where I need to. And because it's be pressure fed from a 300 gallon uh, bilge pump that we drop, and you may have seen that in a couple of other episodes, we drop it into an IBC and that will pressurize the whole system for us. Um, when we want to use watering cans, we use this one here that's got the top cut off. So all along here though, we've got all the garlic coming through. That's in this one and a half rows there. We have red onion and white onion. Now, some of these white onion haven't done so good. Others are only just starting to poke their heads through, but you know, it's okay. All of the strawberry plants that Liz gave us are there. Now, this is an area that we've got all our figs and our Logan berries and also, also there's a couple of Joster berries, there's a cherry here just in front of us here as well so we're hoping to get this area kept up. Now I know we spoke about the compost bins earlier on, these will become is my leaf mould bins so there'll be seven leaf mould bins then that we can use and we'll keep that up here. Now, to give you some sort of idea, the compost is right way over there, look. So, um, it'll just help to sort that out. So up here, I've got a load of beetroot here that's getting a little big. Some of them are okay, um, but it does need to come out. And likewise, this area here, guys, that where the figs are, we've planted this with all bulbs, so they'll start coming through. Just like we planted these a few months back, and they're now starting to come through, look. So, um, but also you'll see last year we had all dafts and dahlias all along the front and they're already coming up. It's crazy just how fast they come up. It's just, you know, we're on um, uh, January 1st of 2019 and we've already got bulbs coming up. Um, up here in this path, you may have uh, remembered last year, early, uh, late last year, we did a video to do with mushroom logs. And at the time I mentioned about spawn that I wanted for morel mushrooms. Well, that turned up the other week and we planted them in all that path along there. So uh, hopefully that will start throwing morels over the next few months. Right, into the shed. Um, okay, so what's happened over the last few months is um, I got a load of cabinets. They've only just been dumped down there for the time being, temporary, just so that I can get them out of the way. And uh, they're not fixed or nothing yet. They've got to be lifted up and legs put underneath them and what have you, and doors put on, and all the doors are all sort of sat there. Um, but it's allowed us to get the tea making facilities. There are a couple of plants in here that are frost need to be kept away from the frost and they were left in the tunnel and I forgot about them. We had a bit of a frost the other night so they're not looking a bit worse for wear. Um, but they'll pull back hopefully. So the plans in here are, I've got a load of timber on the floor there. I'm going to be building a wall here right along which will create a separate room in the back. And what that's going to do is allow me to put shelving behind there so everything's out of sight. And then we're going to turn this shed into more of a recording studio as well. So that when the weather is really bad, I can still come up here and film and do episodes with you guys. So that's the plans for the shed. Um, I've got an issue with this window. It is leaking at the moment and I think it's to do with one of the seals. And it's leaked all down that back wall there as you can see. And I've got a bit of mould going on. So I've got to get that dried out and get that window sorted. But the rest of the shed is, is dry. So that's good. And the roof is looking really well. These are all the sheds I was telling you about that uh, the other gentleman owns. Look at them. They are... They just go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. When I do eventually get this plot, it's gonna take months to take down what I need to out of all of these and to fill the hole with soil. It's gonna probably take about 50 ton of soil, I expect. Um, so it's gonna be a bit of a cost. Okay, so back to these 
water barrels there's 4,000 litres here we've got 8,000 on the plot in all at the moment um, these work fantastic and these are the ones here that are going to link to that pipe work that I was telling you about so that's good okay in the tunnel as you can see the tunnel's doing really well um, we've cleaned out most of it we've pruned all of the grapes so they're already on every single branch look so they're ready now to go again next year we've got our worm farm here and we've done an episode on that as well i'm having a bit of a problem i got a rat that came in from next door i'm trying to catch so uh he is down there at the moment and we've got a trap down for him the tunnel itself uh the banana plant is still under there i don't know whether it'll come through the winter we'll soon find out but i've got an episode that i'm going to be doing very shortly that uh, may help that through the winter now okay so down here i've got a load of squash and things i need to get them out as well before the frosts really do kick in um we've got a load of red currant uh, and loganberry cuttings some rose cuttings and some grapes over there now i need a i got a lot of work to do in here it is a tip and i use this for a seed room and because it's easier to heat a small area but look at it it is an absolute tip at the moment uh all my pots and stuff just get dumped in here and um and they're still there from spring so you can see that uh, i haven't really used this much and uh, something I'm gonna get sorted out for this spring. Okay guys, so we're going up alongside this tunnel now and as you can see, the grapevines are actually planted outside and they go into the tunnel. And this tunnel is gonna need a really good clean his algae and all sorts all over it at the moment. So, uh, these greenhouses here are Keith's, like I said, he's not very well, so there's a very good chance that um, he is gonna be giving up these plots um, and uh, if any of you want to wish him well put it down in the comments below because um, a lot of you have uh, asked about him for quite some time here are all the giant cabbage as you can see they are rotting away here um, in fact there's quite a smell up here I've been really lazy with this section um, we have been taking kale uh, from here on quite a regular basis but even these now are, have been battered by the wind and things like that so um so you know they've had a good hiding but we have been taking it off down here was where all the comfrey was and again uh, you saw this area when it was in bloom when we did the comfrey video we have some sunflower and jerusalem artichokes in this area and we need to pull all them out as well now I've got some rubbish and stuff to sort out here as you can see this area I want to get finished now this year you remember we built this pond a few years ago uh, again that's a really popular video I'll put that down in the description for you and here's the mushroom logs I was telling you about that we did on an earlier episode as well but this area I want to put a path in behind here so I want to dig this down and put a, a, a sort of retaining wall and uh, around the pond last year I put in some more comfrey and I'm gonna probably remove that comfrey and move it elsewhere because it took up a lot of space around this pond don't get me wrong the animals loved it but I couldn't get in here to enjoy it as much so now you've had a look around the plot now we've picked up a lot of new subscribers over the last few months so I'm going to give you what size these plots are now each section that they've shown you up here is 185 foot long and 21 foot wide and we have three of those so um you know it's a, a 63 uh foot wide by 185 foot long plot and then the fruit plot then is 85 foot long and um 21 foot wide so uh, again that's a, a really good size plot as well and that's all dedicated to fruit down there um okay so last year i really tried to get some good information out to you guys and this year i already have a list of about 120 videos i want to make for you so and hopefully that's going to be content that you guys really enjoy firstly and content that 
is going to help you in the garden because that's my ultimate goal is to be able to provide you guys with information that is going to allow you to go home and do it in your own garden so that you get that really good looking garden that you want or you grow the best nutrient dense foods that uh, many can't buy. Well folks I know it's a different episode but I really hope you've enjoyed having a look around what I've got here. There's not a lot growing as you know because I've got so many plans that I want to do and like I said I may have to take down all of those structures if uh, Keith does decide to give up the plots this year and uh, that's going to be a monumental task because they are huge structures there's a lot of timber and glass in them and um, it's going to take a long time and then I'm going to have to bring in probably 20 30 40 ton of soil to fill the hole that they're going to leave because when he built them he took them down to subsoil and he dumped all the soil on top of his other plot that's on the other side and i can't take it back off that plot because it won't belong to me then so um we'll have to import some soil so the last thing i want to be doing while i'm worrying about all of that was trying to look after a load of plants and stuff like that don't get me wrong i'm still going to be sowing for you know spring and things like that now so that'll be all coming up very shortly anyway that's it for me for this episode if you haven't already you can subscribe up here we have an amazon store here and just here you'll be able to look at some other videos that i think you should have a browse at something that's quite popular at the moment and may benefit you anyway guys i'll see you in the next episode i'm tony o'neill this is uk here we grow and remember folks you reap what you sow i'll see you in the next one Bye-bye.